All right, this is the series, four study series uh, called Finishing Well that I did with the Lexington Baptist Senior Adult Beach Retreat. I've got this in four separate YouTube videos, each being probably 20, 25 minutes, not real long, won't be as long as what we did at the beach. And a lot of people um, asked about getting these uh, Bible studies on, on video so they could watch them again. So thank you for joining me. Here we go. We started out with looking at a timeline, and there it is all the way out to eternity. It's quite long, and at the beginning of this timeline, this will be your timeline. That's where you were born. We're not going to go back in history, but just to your history. And if you were born there on this timeline, guess where it, on this timeline you're going to die? About right there. Very, very close. I'm going to, uh, that's when we go to meet Jesus, if we're in Christ. But I'm going to circle that little part right there you see at the beginning, and I'm going to enlarge that. So let's just look at um, your life. There's your birth and your death date, whenever that is. And then there's eternity. Well, let's spread it on out even a little bit more so we can see what we're dealing with here. Now, if this is your timeline, guess what? That's where we are, senior adults. We're kind of in the last fifth, maybe fourth. Of, of our expected or potential lifespan is given under man 70 years if by strength 80. Um, Dot Toomey lived to be 105, but not many are going to make it that far. So let's stretch this on out this way and just look at the rest of our lives. Now, I'm using myself as an example here. I'm I'm 66. I'll be uh, 67 end of November, and I put 105 years here because that's how long Doc Toomey lived. But you know, I just don't know that I'm going to live that long. Um, <laughs> let me back that off, and just for uh, general purposes, let's suppose that I would have 33 years of living left in on this little planet that turns into basically 12,045 days or 289,080 hours and i guess the question is when we look at it this way how are we going to spend the rest of the time we have that's kind of what i wanted this study series to look at how are we going to spend the rest of our days how are we going to finish well we're not going to finish well if we squander the time that we have left. Now, wherever you might be on this timeline, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? And like on that beach retreat, I was probably one of the youngest ones in the room. And we had people scattered across this age span. We had uh, at least one in their 90s that were uh, at this beach retreat. But whatever you do, make it your life goal to finish well. And you can finish well no matter what your past has been. You can finish well. And that's partly what, what I'm looking at in this study. See, we're going to meet our maker. We're going to meet our Savior, our Messiah, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who died on the cross to make it possible that we could have eternal life. Now, the truth is that maybe we're going to be caught up to meet him in the air. We keep talking about the signs of prophecies being fulfilled that we could be. Jesus could come in our lifetime in every one of us. Uh, so much happening. It's almost hard to imagine what this world would be like in five or ten years. And Jesus may be planning his return he came the first time in bethlehem we believe it is he coming again do we believe that strongly he's coming again physically i believe that he is and i want to be ready i like this little phrase that we picked up somewhere 
I didn't come this far to only come this far. Let's let that uh, sink in for us. Wherever you are on your timeline, you haven't arrived and and this is as far as you're going to be. This is as much usefulness as you have in the kingdom. No. God has more in store for each one of us. As long as we have breath, he wants to use us and we want to learn more and more about him, don't we? Philippians 3.14 says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We press on. We sang that song to conclude um, our beach retreat, Press On. I took this picture at Cherry Grove some months ago. Um, the, my favorite place to ponder. And since we were at the beach, I was looking at that. But I had written an article um, for uh, Lexington Life, I think it was, or Our Town. And I began that article talking about the Greek philosopher Socrates and Aristotle. You see, they were 300, 400 B.C. And they made these uh, statements that I think we understand what they meant. But like he, uh, Socrates said, the more I know, the more I know nothing. Well, that's pretty strong. Aristotle said, the more you know, the more you don't know. I think we understand that. But I love what Albert Einstein said, a little more recent to us. He said it a little best, a little more understandable. The more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. That is so true. If you really dig into Bible study, you will get more questions, things that you don't understand. And the more you uh, live, the longer you live, the more you ponder life, the more you will realize, I don't have all this figured out, but Lord, you do. And the challenge is there for us to exercise our faith and trust him, but to keep on learning, to keep digging. We're, we're um, mining for gold. I love, love that verse. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. Proverbs 25, 2. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the honor of kings to search it out. And we will keep searching until we find. So here's the question I pose to our beach retreat, to everyone, and to myself. How do you want the rest of your life to go? How do I want the rest of my life to go? And I came up with five things really pretty quickly. The first one was this. I want to be of sound mind. We all have seen uh, our friends and loved ones, uh, different ones to varying degrees, have had difficulty in this area of those horrible words, dementia or Alzheimer's. And yet we also know of those like Dot Toomey, 105 years, that had a sound mind all the way to the very end and knowing people and being able to enjoy conversation and, and having a sound mind. Who doesn't want that? Yes, our memories might get a little slipping on remembering where we put things in that kinds of kind of memory problems. But I'm talking about having a sound mind to know everybody and to know what's going on in the world. And uh, so this is, yes, I think we all would agree we want that. I want to be reasonably healthy. I say reasonably because I'm a realist. I know that, you know, things like arthritis and, you know, I've had uh, back pain and issues, uh, stenosis in the spine. You know, we all have, have our various uh, aches and pains and ailments and diseases, um, cancers and those kinds of things. But we all want to be reasonably healthy. Yet, and this is probably the more important part, if we're not healthy and we're infirmed or bedridden even, I want to remain faithful. Don't you? I want to remain faithful to God. He's blessed us with how many days that we have lived life and we've enjoyed health. We know what it is like to have good health. But when we start losing it, don't let our faithfulness decline. If anything, let our faithfulness grow. I want to be a blessing to other people. Who wouldn't want that? this to be said of you, that throughout your life, you were just somebody who made other people feel good, or you blessed, you did acts of kindness, 
for other people. Yes, we can do this. But I also want to be productive for the kingdom of God to do to be used to help bring other people to Christ, to uh, disciple other people, to point people to the way, to be involved in missions, all those kinds of things. Yes, I want that for the rest of my life. And I just want to know God deeper, Yahweh deeper through a closer walk with Jesus. Maybe this has to do with, you know, that as we get older, as we think more seriously about spiritual things and and life in general, pondering life, what is life, and why do things happen as they do, the heartaches we see, um, people suffering, and the suffering that goes on in the world, we, we have to grapple with those things, and yet working through all of that, we can grow stronger and, and closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. If we stay in his word, study his word, know his word better, all these kinds of things I want for my life. Let's look at some scriptures that support these. 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and there it is, of a sound mind. Philippians 4, 11, I've learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. That's the verse I thought of and thinking about West Buffington, just that an example of a man who appeared to be content. I want to be like that. No matter, look at Paul in prison, shipwrecked. And that's what he's, he's, that's, he's the one that wrote this. In whatever state that I am, to be content it might be a challenge, but that's what I would want. Um, this, I want to be a blessing. Now, this would certainly be a blessing to other people to heal the sick, raise dead, cleanse lepers, drive out demons. And now most of us would say, gee, I haven't done that. But the last part of that says freely you have received, freely give. You can bless other people with the life that you have, the joy that you have, the knowledge you have of Christ, the uh, just the opportunities that are before us each and every day to bless other people. Let's do that freely. I want to be productive for the kingdom. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We were created to do good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You know, faith without works is dead. If you're not productive in the kingdom of God, where is your faith? He created us to do good works, to be productive in his kingdom. And lastly, about knowing him deeper. I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Oh, to know him more. It's the first song I ever sang at this church. Oh, I want to know you more. Deep within my soul, I want to know you. That's That's got to be our, our heart's desire through life to know him, that I may win Christ and be found in him, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Do you have hope for life after death? I do. But I want to know him. Just a closer walk with thee. That's the heartbeat of that song. All of us, we should spur each other on to want to know God more and more and know truth. You shall know the truth, and truth shall set you free. Isn't that the greatest question ever asked? That's what Pilate asked Jesus. What is truth? That is, and we want to know the truth about the Middle East, um, COVID-19, sickness, diseases. What is the truth of, of how to interpret Scripture? Uh, what do you have in store for us, God? I want to know you more. So how can I achieve these goals for the rest of my life? I wanted to give you some suggestions on each one of these things. First of all, pray for this. I want to be of sound mind. Pray for it and do things that have been shown to support the brain, such as mental exercises, eating healthy, eat blueberries, uh, write everything down. Uh, there are things that we can do to help our minds uh, continue functioning right. 
but you'll see pray for this is going to be the first thing listed in each one of these things. I want to be reasonably healthy, yet faithful if infirm. Pray for good health. Eat well. Exercise. Don't murmur or lose faith in God when health or circumstances become difficult. I do want to be a blessing to others, but pray that you will be a blessing to others. But then just be a blessing to others. <clears throat> you don't really have to think about it too hard too long to be a blessing to others. There's so many things that you can do. Visit, give, minister, show kindness, write cards. There are things that you can do uh, that will bless your neighbors or your family members or other people <clears throat> that you come in contact with. Just be the kind of person that is a blessing. I want to be more productive for the kingdom. Pray for ministry. Put forth the effort to join ministries already in existence. Come join the Legacy Choir as we minister and all the assisted living centers. And uh, what about the backpack ministry? Usher greeters, Mission Lexington, mentoring, getting in, uh, involved with Ezekiel Ministries, writing cards, praying for others. That can all be uh, things that are that make you very productive for the kingdom. And that I just want to know God deeper and have a closer walk with him the rest of my days. Pray for that. Pray for just a closer walk with thee. Be involved in a Bible study. Have a personal devotional and prayer life every day. Do a lot of reading. Read the Bible. Read um, other literature, Christian literature. And then praise him. Thank him. Worship him daily. Sing songs to him. All these things help deepen and strengthen your walk with Jesus. But what happens if you mess up? Can you still finish well? <clears throat> um, who's the, the one in the Bible that you can think of that finished well after messing up badly? You might be able to think of a couple, but the one that sticks out in my mind, probably yours as well, is David. You know, 2 Samuel 11, it came about in the spring at the time kings go out like to do battle. <clears throat> and King David remained in Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon that David got up from his bed and walked about the roof of his king's house. And he saw a woman bathing on her roof. Now, the woman was very beautiful. And David sent and inquired about the woman. He lusted after this woman. And someone said, is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her. And she came to him and he slept with her. <clears throat> he committed adultery. I'm going to throw this just a sidebar here, a thought. <clears throat> because it occurred to me that the name David has always been a very common name. It was among the top five names in the United States in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. It's a biblical name. And why is his name um, so so popular? Now, why are there many people named David? Because David was a man after God's own heart. And even though he messed up, his prayers of confession and repentance are so recorded that it makes him stand out as one that we would like to be like because we've all sinned but one who could find forgiveness and repentance the way he did. On the other hand, now Bathsheba, she was probably less guilty of this sin than David because, you know, in that culture and the king, you know, lusted after her and sought after her. But we just don't have any record in the scriptures of her great repentance and seeking forgiveness. And consequently, the name Bathsheba is not very popular at all. It means daughter of an oath, which, you know, that sounds like a good thing. It has never reached the top 10, though, most popular girls' names, or the top 100 names in the United States. It is the 20,885th most popular name of all time. And over the past 200 years, it's only been recorded that 361 girls have been given the name Bathsheba in the United States. David wrote Psalm 51 to express his repentance after he committed adultery with Bathsheba and arranged the death of her husband, Uriah. He was confronted by the prophet Nathan, you remember, who rebuked him for his sin and announced God's judgment on him. David realized the gravity of his offense and he pleaded for God's mercy and forgiveness.
hands. And this was his prayer. God, in your grace, have mercy on me. In your great compassion, blot out my crimes. Wash me completely from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my crimes. My sin confronts me all the time. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil from your perspective so that you are right in accusing me and justified in passing sentence. True, I was born guilty, was a sinner from the moment my mother conceived me. Still, you want truth in the inner person. So make me know wisdom in my inmost heart. Sprinkle me with hyssop and I'll be clean. Wash me. I'll be whiter than snow. Let me hear the sound of joy and gladness so that the bones you crushed can rejoice. Turn away your face from my sins and blot out all my crimes. He's pouring his heart out to God, creating me a clean heart. Oh, God, renew a right spirit, a right resolute spirit within me. Don't thrust me away from your presence. Don't take your Ruach Kodesh, the Holy Spirit, away from me. Restore my joy in your salvation and let a willing spirit uphold me. Then I will teach the wicked your ways and sinners will return to you. Rescue me from the guilt of shedding blood. Because that's what he did and putting Uriah up on the front lines. He's as much as killed him. God, you are God of my salvation. That's why David is remembered. David's psalm of repentance shows us how we can approach God when we have sinned and need his forgiveness. It teaches us that God is gracious and merciful and that he desires a sincere and contrite heart from us. It also shows us that repentance is not just feeling sorry for our sins, but turning away from them and seeking God's will. Sometimes people are, are sorry that they got caught in their sin, but are they truly sorry for their sin and seeking to turn their life away from sin and turning it toward God. David's name is revered because, why? Because he is the great example for all of us that even if we fail, our God offers a chance for repentance, which if we do, it will result in forgiveness for our sins. David finished well. So in conclusion of this first study, um, I want you to, I just wanted to illustrate this somehow, that we need to have a bigger picture of what life is. Sometimes we get like blinders on and we only see our, our journey, our life, our immediate needs. We're concerned about our family. There's other people in this world, our church family and, and our neighbors and the lost and what's going on around the world in Israel and Palestine and, you know, the Palestinians and Israelis, the war, the killing, the fighting that's going on. What about the war in Ukraine? What about um, our missionaries that are suffering, uh, striving to share the gospel? Um, what about those that are in prison being persecuted all over the world? So here's a person holding a polaroid of a man on a little precipice and it's easy to get just focused in on that that man has uh, maybe a lot of needs and and a, maybe he's a son or a daughter and we just we can just focus in on him but there's a much bigger world out there and if we can realize there's so much more that's going on i pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incom incomparably great power for us who believe. All right, that's session one. And uh, look up the YouTube. I'll send it out uh, for session two on finishing well. All right, see you.